In the last video I talked about bonding and I said that there are three types that you needed to know, covalent, ionic and metallic. But I forgot to mention another type of bonding, coordinate bonding. Now just to recap, a covalent bond is where we have two atoms, in this case hydrogen, each of them donating one electron to the shared pair of electrons in the bond. So this electron here comes from this hydrogen, this one comes from this hydrogen, and they are bonded together because these positive nuclei are attracted to the negative area of the shared electrons. But what if, instead of one electron coming from each of the atoms involved in the bond, both of the electrons came from only one of the atoms? Let's look at an example. If we have a molecule of ammonia, NH3, um, nitrogen is in group 5, which means it has 5 electrons as its highest energy level, 3 of them are involved in the bonding with the hydrogen, and that leaves two left over to form what we call a lone pair, so a paired set of electrons that aren't involved in bonding. And then the other electrons in these covalent bonds come from the hydrogen. And then if we look at another molecule, boron trifluoride, we can see that boron is in group 3, so it's going to have three electrons in its highest energy level, but all of them are involved in this, in this covalent bonding. So those are from the boron, and then each of these come from the fluorine. So boron doesn't have a full energy level here. It only has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It only has 6 electrons in its outer energy level. And Every element really just wants a full one, either 8 or 0. So in order to become stable, this needs to accept two electrons here. And that's exactly what we have on this nitrogen. So if this pair of electrons goes to this boron, then we end up with a new molecule that looks like this. But this bond in the middle is special, because if we again track the electrons, we can see that nitrogen has these five, boron has these three, and then the rest come from hydrogen and fluorine. And in every one of these covalent bonds, we see that there is a shared pair of electrons where one comes from one atom and the other comes from the other atom, except in this bond. In this bond, both of the electrons come from the nitrogen. And this is the donut definition of a coordinate bond. So let's look at another example. In the case of aluminium chloride, aluminium fluoride, we can see that aluminium is in group 3. That means that it has three electrons available for bonding its outer shell. And then chlorine is in group 7, so we would suspect that aluminium forms a compound where bond here, Cl, 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 make these crosses, like this. I don't know why I wrote this as an A, this is Al. So we'd expect it to form AlCl3. So there is only one atom of aluminium and three atoms of chlorine. But instead, it forms something strange. It forms Al2Cl6. Now this isn't the case as with ionic bonding, when this is just a massive repeating unit structure and we've cancelled it down. Instead, we have these individual molecules that contain two aluminium atoms and six chlorine atoms, which means that in every molecule of aluminium chloride, we must have two of these. Now, if we apply what we know about coordinate bonds, we can see that there is an empty area here 
for two electrons to fill the aluminium's highest occupied orbital, and the chlorines have three lone pairs of electrons each. So we can assume that the chlorine is going to form a coordinate bond with aluminium, and that's exactly what it does. And one molecule of aluminium chloride looks like this. Let's just find a good colour to write it in. So that's what it looks like. And we can track the electrons from each of these aluminiums. So we have one there, one there, one there, and then the other one forms one here, here, and here. So then where do these electrons come from? Well, in these electrons, both of them come from the chlorine, and the same here. Both of the electrons in this bond come from this chlorine atom. And these two bonds are coordinate, but we represent them in this display formula as a little arrow. So that means that we know that these bonds are coordinate bonds. And this really should tell us where the pair of electrons comes from. So we can see that here, they're not being donated from aluminium, they're being donated from chlorine. So that is one of the pretty much famous examples of coordinate bonding. Let's look at another thing that coordinate bonding creates. If we have a molecule of ammonia, so nitrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen, and hydrogen, and a hydrogen ion, H+, hydrogen ion doesn't have any electrons. It's lost one electron, and seeing as hydrogen only has a configuration of 1s1, that means it's got no electrons left. So there are no electrons available for bonding in this hydrogen ion. But as we said with the nitrogen, it's in group 5, so one here, one here, one here, and a lone pair. So if we form a coordinate bond between the lone pair and the s orbital of the hydrogen ion, so that now the hydrogen ion is 1s2, and the nitrogen has a full energy level, then we form the compound ammonium here, with four hydrogen atoms, and this is a coordinate bond. But something's missing. The charge of these two ions, of these two uh, molecules, are different. This is neutral, in other words there is no charge, but this is positive. So if on their own we have a complete charge of plus one, together we must have a charge of plus one. So it must mean that this whole molecule is positive. And this isn't because any individual element is positive, it's because the whole thing is positive. The total amount of electrons out doesn't outweigh the amount of protons. But you can't point to any singular bit which is positive, because there is shared electrons. Let's just draw this in orange. There are shared electrons here that both come from the nitrogen. There's shared electrons here, which come from the hydrogen and the nitrogen. So every single element of this is not positive. But because there are more protons than there are electrons, the whole thing is positive. And this is an example of what we call a polyatomic ion. And that about wraps up coordinate bonding. Except to mention that sometimes you'll see it written as dative covalent bonding. And this basically means the same thing. This and coordinate are interchangeable terms, but they're really trying to push coordinate as the new standard thing. So that about wraps it up.